Now, I know what you're thinking. Thank God he got a better microphone. All right. I, I know. I can feel your judgment. It's, it's palpable. Anyway, camera tracking. It's annoying. It's tough. I don't like it. I don't like it. You don't like it either, but here's what we do. There are two methods I've used. Both have their drawbacks. Both of them work pretty well, but if one doesn't work, I try the other one. So method one is a little hack for the After Effects camera tracker. It works really well when it works, but if there's a subject in your scene, or if there's somebody in front of the camera and you're just trying to track the background, it really messes everything up because it doesn't know what to track and what not to track. And so it'll just track everything. How do you tell it to only track the background? This has been the foundation of my VFX career is this method right here. So take your footage, you just want to track the background, it's a selfie, you don't want to track the person in front because it's just going to say track failed, sorry. So you go to the roto brush tool, you go lowest quality possible, this does not matter if it's good quality. Roto out your subject or anything that's moving within the scene that's not the camera. So cars going by, uh, whatever. Rotoscope those things out and hit invert foreground versus background. Freeze that, turn the feathering up, expand the edges, so now there is nothing moving except the things that you want to track. Now your footage might be a little bit blurry, it might be a little bit grainy, there's not a lot of detail in say the sky or the ground or whatever. So go into filters, blur and sharpen, unsharp mask until there's just so much detail in everything that you can't even process what's going on. Now, if you were going to try to just track this, it wouldn't actually take any of the things that you just did into account because it ignores, and it tells you, it ignores all the other effects that you've done, which is silly and stupid. But the way to get around that is to just pre-compose and suddenly that is the base layer. All these things that you've done are just baked in. So once you've done that, now you can try the 3D camera tracker. If you know the angle of view that you were shooting at, you can specify that and it'll actually come up with a better track. It won't work all the time, and if you don't know it, probably just best to leave it automatic. And that method works about 85% of the time. Now, if that does not work, or if it works for just a part of it, and you got all the little subtle movements down for the middle, but maybe the, the beginning isn't really right, or it just said it didn't work at all, you can use something that I've talked about before, which is the AE to blend add-on for Blender. It's paid, but it's not very expensive. It's on Blender Market. I love it. It's super simple. It's such a big help. I hate the Blender tracker. I hate it so much. But you can use that. You can copy and paste your After Effects camera into Blender. Uh, make sure you copy and paste the field of view as well. Just double click on the camera, copy and paste, boom. So now you have your camera, your After Effects camera in Blender. But you know, maybe it doesn't work at the beginning. This part kind of sucks. So now we're going to use the Keen Tools Mesh Tracker. And this thing is it's, I don't, I don't know how it works, but you have one frame where the camera is lined up where you want it to be. I'm assuming this is the last frame of where the After Effects camera worked before it sort of conks out. Then you can do a simple model of your footage. Now, if you're shooting outside or something like that and everything's in the background, you could just use a sphere. You don't have to model everything. You don't have to model trees. You just use a really big sphere at a plane for the ground, hit Control J to join the objects together, and now you can just use that to do your track. So you set the camera as the camera, set the mesh as the mesh. You're a good woman. I'm good man. Track it, and now you have a fully tracked scene. And if it's not perfect, the great thing about the mesh tracker is you can just customize it. You can add keyframes and then have it track based on those keyframes. So say it doesn't look right here, you just use the pin mode to adjust it and then hit refine, and it will track from the last keyframe to this keyframe. So it's sort of this hybrid, manual, automatic. It looks really good. And this is a great way to get a good looking track that works in your scene. It's not gonna be mathematically correct. If you really wanna do like some really intricate putting objects in there that really line up to something in there it's not going to be mathematically correct with the mesh tracker it's just, it's not the movement isn't going to be perfectly perfect but it's going to look like it's part of your scene and from the viewport you're not going to know so after effects mesh tracker rotoscope unsharp mask pre-comp then use the after effects camera tracker usually that'll work if it doesn't use the mesh tracker in blender and you can use that hybrid with the AE to blend add-on. Don't pay for synthize. It's way too much. I don't know how to use it, so I'm just going to say it's a scam um, because I don't know how to use it. 